What Borum achieved in Mosgiel, New Zealand was extraordinary. As I became acquainted with his work as a pastor, firstly through his writings and then in the process of my investigations, I discovered that not only could I apply the lessons from Borum's pastoral experience to my Tasmanian context, I soon discovered to my utter amazement and delight that Borum had actually pastored in Tasmania for 10 years. So I think he's actually shown the importance of the pen and how you can actually multiply your ministry way beyond your own postcode. Where he says this, Wedge Bay, our holiday home in Tasmania, was no less romantic than his time in New Zealand. Our front, Our front windows, facing west, looked out upon the bay. The water was as calm as a mill pond. What, what can you tell us about Borum, the photographer? He, he, he used a plate camera, that is, a glass plate negatives. And the interesting thing was that he, he was still taking photographs on a, on a plus, pla, glass plate negatives, um, even after Kodak had introduced this, their, their, their little box camera. And among those Christian books, my grandmother gave me a bunch of Everlastings by Borum. I started to preach uh, at youth services and so on when I was 15. And between about 15 and 17, I ran dry every week of new subjects and new things. And back to Borum I'd go, and I'd find a story which uh, I must admit I often adapted to when I was in Scotland. <laughs> From Borum had a habit of, of taking a good story which would get you in. Then he would extrapolate that uh, and then he would add biblical material and so on. Soon after our settlement in Hobart, my literary life entered upon a new and totally unexpected phase. My proximity to the Australian mainland led to my receiving invitations to write for Melbourne and Sydney journals. The heart of Borum soon became evident to all. It wasn't to become one of the world's best preachers, neither was it to become one of the best-selling religious writers in recent history. It was to win lost souls to their saviour. Borum would probably say that, you know, I, I just did the basics preaching, pastoring, visiting. And he would say that it was, it was very, very simple. But I think one of the things that he did was to really energize the ordinary things. He saw the calling to be a pastor, to be a high calling. Under the influence of this new environment, it was no wonder that he felt like a bird freed from its cage and was soon uttering his soul from the tabernacle pulpit with an assurance and delight which he had never known before. One of the great other issues that he faced was during the First World War, uh, a time when he was at the Hobart Baptist Church, the Tabernacle. And during that time, he, in the early days of the war, he would often preach on duty and obligation, the importance of doing the right thing uh, by king and country as it was in those days. After a while, as he as he came to visit a number of families and, and often he would be the one, Borum would be the one to pass the news that, that a loved one had, had died on the field of battle. I think as that happened more and more, again, once again, you find him beginning to preach in a much more pastoral way. He tells stories of, from the battlefield that people can relate to and that give them a sense of solace and of God being with them, of the care and compassion of God. So. I find the principles that F.W. Borum employed to be salt and light into the culture and the rich Tasmanians still very applicable today. I've been greatly inspired by considering how he did it and I hope you will be too.